Hey guys, Zaxi Manic Uncertainty here, and today I am back with the third video in the Unity Car Physics tutorial series. So, today we are going to be going over the next phases of the physics uh, system, as well as, well, primarily the um, view finding and also getting these wheels to turn. So, if I play this right now, you'll see that these wheels are completely stagnant, right? And that's a problem, obviously. If I move this car, you can see it also shakes quite a bit. Um, you know, and so we are going to fix a lot of that today. We're also going to fix this camera situation we have here. And uh, yeah, so let's just get right into some of that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our car controller script. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to come into our actual project. So let's just minimize this, right? And uh, let's just open up our script and take a look at uh, what we can do here. So a lot of people, um, when they go to make these cars, right, uh, want to make sure that these wheels turn, right, obviously. And, uh, you know, it seems like you can just do this, right? You can just turn these wheels really easily. You can just set the Y values uh, relative to those of the car. So, you know, you can use some functions for that built into Unity. But uh, you're going to come into some troubles, right, when you try to incorporate that with a rotation of this wheel in this direction, right? Uh, and in JavaScript, it would be easy. You can just grab the Y value for this. But uh, I've noticed in the past that there are some buggy aspects of that whole um, you know, ordeal in uh, C sharp, right? And so that process just seems a little bit um, outlandish for us. And so I think that in order to reduce the amount of work that we need to do, we're just going to take a new approach. And uh, I will be showing you that whole thing today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go in and we're going to create a new game object. And the way that this is going to work, as I'm just creating these, I will explain this. Uh, is that we're going to start off with some game objects, right? And we're going to add wheel colliders to them. And then underneath said wheel colliders, um, we're going to add our actual objects. So like here, right, we have this one. And we're going to get this wheel collider information from our actual wheels here, right? So let's copy that. And we're not going to take that and just paste it in here as we learned how to do last time, right? And now that we've done that, we can just go and copy this a few times, right? And uh, now let's rename these. So each of these is going to correspond to a wheel. So I'm going to make this one my back left, right? <clears throat> we can just call that our BL. And then we can call this BR for back right. Um, and then FL, right, for front left. And then FR for front right. And uh, in order to, you know, just sort of fix some of the stuff that we had here, uh, we're going to sort of work around, you know, the issues with the code base and just, um, you know, get around a lot of the math that we would have to do in order to resolve those issues. So, um, you know, let's just uh, get started with that right now. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to take each of these. We're going to drag the object under its respective location. So this is the front left, so we're going to put it here. I really I like that they wrote fonts there, uh, just kind of interesting to me. Uh, so we're going to write right front, uh, back right, right under each section, left front and back left. Right, And we can see, if we take a look at these, that they're all in their proper positions. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into our transform. We're going to hit reset and that's going to bring it to its rightful location here. Right? And so now if we take a look at it, it is a perfect match, right? So we have a nice new wheel collider positioned right there. And uh, I do I do think that this size may be a little bit off actually. Um, and so I may make these all 0.33 now. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I just sort of feel like adjusting that. <coughs> Sorry, took that wrong. 
Uh, let's just make this one 0.33, right? And this one, and this is not the most important thing, but it's gonna help a lot when we get on to some of this math in a second. It's not hard math, don't worry about it, but uh, you know, it's very important. Uh, you know, in the process of actually making this game look nice and uh, just polishing some of our stuff later on. So we're going to just do that with all these, just make sure that they move to their respective locations. And uh, yeah, so now that we've done that, uh, what we can do is we can just take these out from underneath them. So let's just put this one back at the bottom below the center of mass. And we're going to grab all these and just do that, right? So now that we have that, um, we can just do the opposite. So now we're going to take this back left wheel. We're going to drag it under. We can break this prefab instance. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then we're going to take the front left and put that under here and the back right. And then also the right front, right? So all of these, if you look, are proper. Um, you know, they are located at their respective locations. Okay, so now that that's all set up, uh, we can just get into the scripting. So let's just save our scene. And uh, now let's go back into our car controller. So now that we've hopped back in here, let's add a new list, right? And this is going to be a list of game objects, right? And it's going to contain our... Um, Steer, I'll, we'll just call this uh, mesh, right? Meshes, and uh, this is just going to basically contain all of these, right? These sub objects, um, and we're just calling that, uh, calling them that because you know these game objects are literally just going to act as meshes now. So we can actually, now that I'm thinking of it remove all of these wheel colliders, right? We don't need these anymore. Um, you know, the objects under which they're sitting already have their own wheel colliders. And so we are perfectly fine to do that. And um, now we can go back into our code, right? So in here, uh, I do want to change one more thing, which is this, right? <clears throat> and I'll get to why I've changed that in a second. But in the meantime, we can just take a look at our code. So you can see here, we've thrown one error, right? But we can just correct that really easily. And then steer angle. So what we're gonna have to do here is just uh, do a dot get component, right? Oops. And then we're gonna add in our wheel collider, right? And so basically, uh, now I'll get to why we've done that. So when you see a steering wheel, right, you know that it has to be able to rotate uh, on the y-axis. And by that, I mean that it has to be able to turn left and right, uh, you know, according to the user's input on the uh, horizontal axis to uh, unity. So, you know, when I'm hitting keys, I want this thing to be able to visually represent that it's turning. So that's what we're going to do here. And so we need this game object so that we can control the visual aspects as well as the wheel itself. And so now what we can do is we can say wheel, right, dot uh, transform, right, and then dot local Euler angles, or Euler angles, sorry. It's not Euler. Uh, sorry, yeah, this is not invocable. So what we're, oops. So we're going to do, right, is we're just going to create a new vector three, and this is just how you instantiate a new type or um, you know a new instance of a class. So we're creating a vector three, um, and we can just add some values in here. So this one is going to be a zero, right? And we'll just start it off that way, and then we can replace this value. And what this is going to be is just our im dot steer times max turn, right? And you may be thinking, you know, why is that the case? Um, well, simply put, this value here has to be equal to, or um, has to have zero on these axes in that, like, here, let me just, uh, there it is. Okay, so it has to have zero on these axes in that 
Like if I look at this, the y-axis is the one that we want to turn. So we want this to always be zero, right? Because we don't want to just be turning the wheel when we're giving, you know, steering input only. And uh, you can see now that if we turn this part, only that turn. So this wheel collider isn't going to turn, and we're going to get the results that we want out of this, um, you know, system now. Because now we can turn that, and then individually on this x-axis, rotate this wheel. So I just hope you can see that now. Hope that's starting to make sense to you. Um, so we're going to go back into our code, right? So now that that's done, uh, we actually should just be able to run it, and I can then show you what this looks like and we're not getting anything oh yeah so can't can't actually move right now for some reason is that accurate doesn't doesn't actually seem like we're moving anywhere it's kind of odd okay so let me just oh yeah i know what the issue is okay i'm sorry so we have some null object references here, as you can see. Um, so what we have to do is we have to go back into our car and reset all of this because obviously we, you know, changed a lot. So we're gonna just put all of these back in, and it instantly will grab all of our wheel collider references again. Right, we can grab our fr too, and then in the steering wheels. We know that it's just going to be our front left and our front right. And that grabs those instances, and then we can just go play this again. And we should see, there you go. So in this, you can now see it's uh, turning perfectly fine. Right. Uh, but now, now a new issue arises. And, uh, you know, I'm, I know how to fix this, right? But just to show you, this if I hit the key now, right, it instantly returns to the center. So if I let go, it's natural, right? But if I click, it instantly resets. So I can just, like, that's that's not what we want. We don't want the car to just be driving and then suddenly just snap back. That's not realistic. So in order to fix that, what we're going to do here is we're going to go into our edit section, right? We can edit our project settings input, and now we can get our axes, right? And if you remember, we're using the horizontal axis for steering. And so what we can do here is we can turn off this snap setting here. And in doing this, right, we can now come back into our scene and play it. And we should see, yeah, see that? So now we can't simply, you know, swap between turning right and turning left as quickly as we were and uh, you know you can see the car is a little bit messed up right now but again we'll fix that in a minute so now that we fixed all of those things right I actually do want to change a little detail here which is I want to move this up a little bit just in case it's interacting with the ground anywhere um, and now we can go back into our code so back in our code we know that we need to change something. So for each of our mes mes <coughs> meshes, um, we need to change a few values. So, or we need to interact, right? So, as as I said earlier, our meshes are going to be, um, you know, rotating, right? So, our meshes will handle all of our forward rotation of the wheels. So, the game objects are so that all of these wheels can spin just a little bit on axis, but then the meshes uh, ensure that we can turn them in the forward and backward direction such that, you know, when the car is moving, we can easily create the effect of uh, rotation such that it appears that those are, you know, producing the, uh, you know, forward motion and, uh, you know, not the wheel colliders, that these are the wheel colliders essentially. So in order to do that, we're going to add a new or we're gonna get a new game object reference and we're gonna call this wheel again actually let's just call this mesh I think that's more uh, fitting for the name right um, and then we're going to go into our meshes script and we're just gonna iterate through these essentially and um, you know for each mesh in here right right what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go mesh dot transform dot rotate and uh, as I said earlier the math is a little bit odd, 
so don't don't freak out but it's going to be very long so we can start off with this basic 0f 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 right we don't need to turn on these two axes right since I already demonstrated and uh, I'll do it again just so you can get that through your head um, just in case you haven't realized that yet but the x-axis is the one that controls our rotation for the wheel so what we need to do actually I can simplify this what we need to do is we need to say right um, mesh dot transform dot right which gives us that X without you know adding the zero F's at the end um, and then we can add in our math so here is how I have thought to do this right now obviously we want this to be um, rotating according to our velocity right so what we're going to do here is first we're going to start with our rigid body instance and we're going to take this velocity and get its magnitude right and what this does is the faster we're moving the faster the wheel spins so that makes sense right and now um, we're just going to make some minor changes to this so actually the way that we're going to do this is we're going <clears> to <throat> start by using our basic formula for circumference of a circle and going back uh, based on you know our information in order to figure out the number of revolutions per second so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take our velocity which is in meters per second and we're going to divide by 2 pi r right um, and our r would be our radius and pi can be obtained through math.f or mathf.pi, right? And then we can now multiply in this extra variable here, which is going to be our radius. And if we just check here one more time, we can <coughs> get that value. So our radius would be 0.33, and so we can just <coughs> add that in, right? And um, this is going to be our equation here it's not that complex but again um, there is one more aspect of it that's going to make it more complex but before that I'm going to demonstrate the problem that leads us to said complexity so you can see oh yeah so here let me just stop this for a second let's go into here we didn't set um, our meshes yet so we need four of them and each of these wheels has to be a mesh right so we're gonna just add these in just trying to go a little bit faster than the previous tutorial so we can cover more content right now uh, you know just sort of push through this blockade of math and whatnot so we can now see that our wheels are turning right but some weird stuff is going on here okay first off lot of wacky stuff happening with the rotation um, if you look in the camera view that is not natural at all right that is not okay <laughs> um, and if I just drive in a straight line even you can see they continue to do that and I'm not exactly sure what I just did with that bit um, that's a bit odd, actually. Um, here, let's just, first off, try going back to this original state here, right? The zero Fs. Um, we're just going to sort of backtrack, right? Because I do need to figure out what's wrong here so that I can help you guys figure this out for yourselves. Okay, so that was it. So I guess I did something wrong with the transforms and I'll figure out what that was later. But in the meantime, you can see that if we change that, we get a good result. So this is perfectly fine. So now what is the issue about which I was talking, right? Well, you can see if I move out a little bit, right? And just back it up. Our wheels are still turning forwards, right? You see that? So our wheels continue to turn forwards regardless of our direction. They're just because we're already, uh, if you look here, using the magnitude, right? This doesn't have 
any relation uh, ship with our actual value for our you know direction on the z-axis and by that I mean like with the respect to the car so this is the z-axis for the car like it's the local orientation right and if the car is moving forward on its local z-axis then you know that'll be a positive value if it's moving backward this will be negative right but we're not taking that into account we're just taking into account the magnitude of our total velocity right so we need to figure out how we can get that right without messing up any of our code um, so that our wheels actually rotate properly <coughs> and this is a little bit um, you know I, I guess I could say unconventional or just atypical in general I've never really seen people try to use a ternary operator in their you know definitions like this but I think that it was um, you know a, a more elegant solution to this so I'm just going to explain how we can do that so the way that a ternary operator works if I just show you here right is so we're gonna ternary operator right and this essentially allows us to do an if else right but briefly and the way that this works is we give it a condition so let's say you know one is greater than zero and then we add a question mark, right? And this is just where we are evaluating. So this is essentially a marker for the fact that this is our statement, right? So this is essentially our evaluation. And this is the marker to end our evaluation. And then here, <coughs> we can write just essentially whatever condition or whatever action we want. So we can write A as a value. So in this case, we could write, you know, true and then here we could write false and I or uh, I don't know let's just write that um, or you know that right? because true and false would be redundant since this will already return a um, you know value like that so that would be uh, completely tautological and kind of self-referential so we don't need that um, so anyhow we're gonna back up a little bit and figure out how we can apply this to our code so coming back here uh, now that we hopefully understand the ternary operator we can just grab our condition so what do we want our condition to be well right now we have this issue where you know our values are not actually working properly and as I said we need to figure out how fast we're moving on the z-axis, right? We need to figure out if our car is moving forward or backward. And so what we can do is we can use a number of functions from Unity. So we can use our transform, right, dot, and then here we can go inverse transform direction. I'm just going to highlight over this so you can see what it does. So our inverse transform direction will allow us to take in um, you know a value in world space right and just convert it to local space right and I hope that that makes sense because we're gonna dive right into it right now and uh, here sorry about that we can just grab our velocity here right and I, I really hope that I'm not being yeah that's what I thought okay so <coughs> if we grab our velocity we can then convert this into units relative to the car. So, right, originally our x, y, and z components of the velocity would have been, you know, according to the actual x, y, and z axes. Actually, this is y. So, you know, x, y, and z axes. Or, oh my gosh, x, y, and z axes, right? Um, and that you know is not how we want it to be because if we're just using that we can't actually really evaluate if this is positive or negative very easily we'd have to do a bunch of you know basic um, well I mean it's rudimentary math but you know a lot of just really like monotonous stuff you know and it would be really tedious to come up with all those values so we can just do this and then at the end we can put dot C and this is now relative to the car and so 
this right now may seem like it's what we need, right? But this value is our actual magnitude, uh, and I just I sort of prefer to use this because it accounts for like you know um, some stuff where we're like sliding and whatnot. And I just think that if we're sliding, the wheel should probably be turning and accounting for that a little bit. If we're moving, if we're sliding slightly, because the wheels are going to slow down. But if we're sliding completely horizontally, right, we still think, I still think that our wheels should be turning a little bit because our car is probably going to continue to slide so long as those wheels continue to spin. And so if those wheels don't even appear to be spinning, that's not very realistic. Um, additionally, if it's a slight slide, we were probably turning our wheels a second ago. And so this thing needs to decelerate pretty slowly instead of, you know, just suddenly, you know, having wheels that aren't spinning without any sort of uh, input from the user. So enough said, we're going to now incorporate our ternary operator. So we can say greater than or equal to, right? And then zero, right? And now we need to add our condition. Since this is a true, as it says here, we can't operate, um, you know, through by means of multiplication on you know a float on a boolean, so we need to then add our condition. So we can add this question mark, right? And now our error is gone, and now we need to add our two options, right? So if it's true, if this evaluates true, we want this to be a one, right? Because we just want to have this value. We don't want to modify it in any way. And if it's false, we want a negative one because we want this thing to be rotating in the other direction. And uh, I hope that that makes sense. I've attempted to go to great lengths in order to explain it. Um, but regardless, we're now going to come in here. And if we just run this, you should see it's now turning, right? And if we stop, you can see that it now turns in the other direction. So that is now working just fine. And if you look at this whole thing, it's looking pretty good, right? Um, and now I just want to change a few things, but uh, this video is running very long. And so I'm just going to cut it here. As you can see, we've incorporated all this stuff with the wheels and whatnot, right? So we have a camera that works. We have, you know, turning wheels. We have steering. Everything that a car really needs is here in some respect. But, um, you know, again, I'm going to continue to add features to this, and we're going to keep working our way towards an actual playable game. So I hope that you've enjoyed this, you know, third video in the series. Um, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and, uh, you know, comment your suggestions. If you have any comment ideas for videos, comment questions, anything that you want to share. Uh, yeah, and um, the other thing is that, uh, you know, just to forewarn you, or I guess more foretell, um, next video we are going to cover some more stuff with the camera, um, you know, such as smooth angles instead of just this where it's, you know, looking perfectly at the uh, car at all times. And then we're also going to go over, you know, reducing this bumpy, you know, stuff that we're getting here, right? So this reverberation with the car is not really good we don't exactly want that that's not conducive to you know realism and um, to you know high-speed racing and also this we need to really fix a lot of this torque stuff we shouldn't be able to turn this fast we should be sliding so you know all that and more will be covered in the coming videos and uh, we're going to do headlights braking all sorts of cool stuff so i hope that you are excited for that and uh, yeah, so uh, that's going to be it. That's me signing off. And uh, bye, guys.